Hello and welcome to Neighbourhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and we have joining us today Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. Today we are looking at waterfowl, butterflies and some other cool creatures. These are a pair of scops that we saw at the creek. The brown one is the female and the other one is the male. Scops are diving ducks which means that instead of dabbling like mallards by tipping over, they actually dive for their food. And there's two kinds of scops here in Alberta. There is the lesser scop and the greater scop, and they look pretty much the same. The main difference is the head shape, but since ducks can kind of ruffle their head feathers around and they can also get wet, it's sometimes very difficult to tell. So these ones look like they might be greater scops because they've got sort of, a, sort of a more rounded head. We're just going to call them scops for now. You can find them on lakes and creeks. We were out at Big Lake and we saw lots of waterfowl and Hannah saw a duck that she's never seen before. So this is a redhead duck, which I think is a very excellent name for it because it's got this very bright kind of reddish rusty colored head. Other than that, they kind of resemble scops with a very grayish body and darker back. If you see a bird that you've never seen before, try posting it on one of the nature apps like Nature Links or iNaturalist. And sometimes people will identify it for you. This was a day to see ducks at Big Lake. We saw these golden eyes. And like the scop, there are two kinds of golden eyes, the barrow's golden eye and the common golden eye. And also like scops, you can tell the females apart by head shape. But the males are a lot easier because they can be distinguished by the little white shape near the beak. We saw this, what we think is a baby golden eye. It's got that white patch on its cheek. And it's very cute. These are American coots that we saw in the Sturgeon River, and I've seen them there quite often. I wish we could have gotten a, a video of them because they have a very distinctive head bobbing swimming motion, but they also really enjoy reeds, and so they often disappear from view just as you begin filming. Coots have very odd lobed toes, so they're not webbed like a duck's feet, but they have kind of like thin edges to their toes, and so when they walk on land, they're kind of awkward. This is a redneck grebe, and like the coot, it also has webbed feet. And you can find these birds around St. Albert and Edmonton and surrounding areas. And it's easy to identify it because it has that red neck. Yeah, and this is something you can see from quite a distance away. So if you see a bird with a sort of long neck shape, and you, you can see a small bit of red on it in the neck area, it's probably a redneck grebe. For our final duck for today, this is an American widgeon, and we've seen this on the Sturgeon River and also in ponds. They make a very odd whistling noise, which sounds kind of like a squeaky toy. We've seen a lot of butterflies and moths lately, likely because everything's starting to bloom, and we thought it would be fun to show you some of what we've seen. Now we really wanted to show you a picture of a swallowtail butterfly, which are these huge yellow butterflies that we've seen everywhere in the last week. But unfortunately, they don't seem to land. They just keep flying and flying and flying. So we never got a photo. But instead, we have this lovely morning cloak butterfly, which you'll probably see in July. What we did get a photo of is this beautiful white admiral. And you might recognize where it's taken. It's right outside of St. Albert Place. You might notice that the colors look very fresh and vibrant. And that's because it had just come out of its cocoon. And we know that because the cocoon was actually lower down on the pole. You just can't see it in this photo. They really like trees and that's probably why this we found this one outside of St. Albert Place because it's right near a heavily treed area. Lisa identified this butterfly using an online butterfly guide. And it is a common ringlet and we found it in our backyard and it was in our backyard again today. So the way I figured out what type it was, I knew that it had that orange part on it and if you look really closely you'll see that there's a dot on the orange wing and that dot was kind of the telltale sign of okay this is what this butterfly is along with the fact that the edges are ringed with white. This butterfly was a whole different kettle of fish. It was really hard to identify. I think I got it but I'm not 100% sure but I think it's a northern azure. Yes this is a butterfly that comes from a family known as blues and they're all kind of small butterflies with bluish upper wings and kind of grayish underwings, which is what we're seeing here. And they all look very similar and you can sometimes tell what kind they are from the pattern of dots on the underwing. But other than that, you have to go mainly by when you see them and where you saw them. And they're very pretty. 
based on markings and where we found this butterfly, we think it's a Kalman alpine. It really likes meadows and we've seen it around quite a bit the last few days. It also likes dandelions apparently, because both of the times we've seen it, it's been feeding on the dandelions. Speaking of things that we found in our yard lately, we found a lot of hoverflies and they're Hannah's favorite insect. And we have a lot of flowers and they are all over those flowers. Now these are my favorite insect because of all the different colors and patterns that they have. And also because they can hover in midair. And something interesting you can do with hoverflies is if you see one hovering, you can slowly put your hand up underneath. And then if you move your hand back and forth, it will sometimes follow your hand. Hoverflies are great pollinators. So if you have a vegetable garden, make sure you plant some flowers in your vegetable garden and you will get the hoverflies in your garden pollinating your vegetables. Thanks for watching Neighborhood Nature and we'll see you next week.